Well, it's time now on Live from Paris for our health and science segment. And today we're looking at antibiotic resistance. According to a new study published by The Lancet, more than 1.2 million people died from antibiotic resistant infections in 2019. That is hundreds of thousands more than died from malaria or from HIV AIDS. To speak more about this, let's welcome our health editor, Julia Seeger. And Julia, um, this is the first time we have such a clear picture of the effects of antibiotic resistance. That's right, Nadia. For the first time, a scientist at the University of Washington in Seattle designed a model to try to predict how many people, or not predict, but try to uh, estimate how many people died in 2019 of uh, uh, bacterial infections that could have previously been treated if it weren't for antimicrobial resistance. And they concluded, indeed, that 1.2 million people died directly of bacteria resistant to antibiotics. Now, it's important important to say that for years now, scientists have been warning about the fact that this is probably one of the biggest threats facing modern medicine. Uh, it affects all regions in the world. The most effective, uh, affected regions, uh, though, are sub-Saharan Africa, as uh, you can see on the map, and also uh, South East Asia. And the reason why is because of poor hygiene conditions that are going to boost the development of, of those resistant bacteria. But as you can also see on the map, it's also a problem in East and Western Europe and also the United States. And in those countries, it's actually due to an overuse or misuse of antibiotics. As you know, they can work on bacteria, but not on viruses. And in those countries, they are still often prescribed against the flu or viral infections. And this is what raises the prospect that what we considered as being common infections, such as septus or pneumonia, for instance, today are becoming deadly. To give you an example, in the United States, you have more people that die from staph infections, mm -hmm. from staphylococcus aureus infections, than they do from HIV. That's extraordinary, Julia. And tell us then a bit about how exactly antibiotic use affects and triggers resistance to antibiotics. Well, here it's actually a very Darwinistic explanation. As you know, in nature, the, 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 um, the species that will survive are not the toughest or strongest. It's the ones that can actually adapt. Well, it's the same thing with bacteria. Now, what happens is that in your guts, you have different types of uh, germs. So naturally, you have germs that are uh, resistant. Here you can see that are resistant in blue. Uh, to certain antibiotics. You have that naturally. You also have uh, helpful germs that are here to protect you. When you take an antibiotic, what happens is that uh, the uh, germs that are responsible for the infection will be uh, will disappear, but also your helpful germs will also disappear, leaving those, uh, my, those bacteria that are resistant. What happens is the more you take antibiotics, the more they're going to multiply and become dominant. And what happens is either they become dominant because they've mutated and those antibiotics can't work, or because they can actually transfer the strain responsible for the resistance to that antibiotic to other germs that just didn't have it. So how can we tackle antibiotic resistance? Well, the best way, of course, to tackle any problem is to try to prevent the cause, right? So preventing the infection uh, before it happens implies strict hygiene conditions in hospitals, for instance. It's also about uh, developed countries to try to reduce their use of antibiotics. Uh, you know, doctors also using what we call antibiograms. So these are uh, tests that actually show uh, the uh, how much strains of pathogens will be resistant to certain antibiotics, and you do that before you actually prescribe it. Uh, and it's also about improving surveillance of those resistant strains in the world, especially in developed countries. Now, what's really important as well is to understand that we need a more holistic approach because uh, – Bio antibiotic re resistance is, uh, you know, concerns, of course, humans, but it also concerns animals. So we use a lot of antibiotics on livestock today, but we can actually, uh, those uh, resistant germs can actually be spread between animals and humans. So, uh, and, and that can happen in your plate, in what you eat. So we do need a holistic approach here as well. Now, what's important is that scientists encounter uh, a lot of trouble today in developing new antibiotics. And this is why the WHO, for instance, is saying that we're going in a post-antibiotic era. Um, and But there are alternative strategies. One of them is phage therapy, just to make it very simple. A phage is uh, a virus that can actually infect a bacteria. What's it, once it's in there, it's going to multiply to the point where it's going to implode uh, the, the bacteria. Julia Seeger, our health editor, thank you very much. Thank you.